Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and welcome. I'm very pleased to be joined by Julia Bauer. Julia is a co-founder of Spark eFuels. Given the name, they're, they're obviously working on eFuels for the aviation sector, and Julia is going to be one of the speakers at the forthcoming SAF Congress, which is fast approaching us, 7th to the 9th of June in Amsterdam. So welcome, Julia. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for the invitation and having me. So your background, you're obviously a, a, a chemist, a chemical engineer, you, you have a, a doctorate, so you're a doctor, a doctor Julia Bauer, with a speciali specialization in, I, I believe, kinetic and mechanistic studies of CO2 hydro, hydro generation. So obviously very relevant for the, for the work that you're doing. And um, uh, so can you give us maybe just a little bit of background to, 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 to yourself and Sparky Fuels um, and, and the actual uh, opportunity and process that you see? Sure. Yeah, as you said, I'm a, I'm a chemist or a chemical engineer, have been working in academia on the topic of yeah, CO2 hydrogenation, so synthetic fuels or fuel additives were the target products. Um, yeah, I went to chemical industry afterwards and was working as a process engineer, really working on demo plants, pilot plants, and scaling them up to actually production plants or transferring the ideas that we that we got there. And yeah, my, my two co-founders basically um, calculated a business case and said, Julia, is it possible to, to um, produce sustainable aviation fuels with like fluctuating energy from wind and solar? What do we need for that? Because mm -hmm. that is the cheapest way to do that. And sure, I said, why not? Uh, let's try, let's develop the technology around that, see what, what we need. And we did that and are now in the process of uh, um, building the first demonstration plant. Excellent. And the and the key, um, I think, from what you said, was around that variability. And so, so keep coping with a variable supply of uh, electricity, so being able to turn it on and off. And um, I guess, fit into a, a, a future sort of energy system. Um, and I, I, I guess it will also potentially be a, a, a solution which is quite decentralized um, by, by its nature. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what we think. So yeah. we're big fans of all the technologies that, that are emerging right now. And given the massive scale that, that we need to reach to really decarbonize aviation in a meaningful way, um, we find that all of these technologies have to be developed. And we see those amazing projects coming up that are powered by hydropower, for example. But we also see that eventually we have to go away from those steady uh, electricity inputs and really harvest the fluctuating nature of uh, wind and solar energy. Mm -hmm. they, yeah, and they may, might be uh, quite decentralized as well, yeah. Yeah. And in terms of the um, uh, the, the 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 project um, and the, the demo project you're working on, I guess there's there's some secret IP that, that, that you're working on. I guess that that's all um, patented or being developed um, in 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 uh, in the dark, as it were, or, or under stealth operation. Yeah, so we did uh, the research and we did the development. We're currently in the process of, of filing those uh, findings and um, patenting a certain plant design that mm -hmm. we think allows us to better work with um, wind and solar energy. Yeah. And Absolutely. yeah, I think by the time of the Congress, I will be able to talk more yeah. about that. And in terms of the market, which is obviously fast developing, we've, we've, we've seen a, a great signal, I guess, with the Refuel EU. In terms of a specific, um, you know, market compliance market being created uh, specifically for e fuels, so that must be a a, a great um, a great signal, great timing, especially for you guys. For sure, we were very happy to finally um, have the actual quotas uh, released uh, mm -hmm. a couple of weeks. I think two two weeks ago now. Um, yeah, we see that that the European Union massively um, counts on the production of e-fuels as well, and we like to hear that because uh, the, there's basically uh, in the future unlimited supply of resources, and we have to start now to learn how to really use them and put them to use. So um, we were very happy about those regulations and. For sure, we want to uh, contribute to really meet those very ambitious uh, targets. 
yeah. and I mean and in terms of um the the, the overall market or plan you're, you're looking um you're, you're based in in Germany or in, in Switzerland and what, what what are some of your thoughts around um the markets and and specifically the EU versus I don't know the, the US or mm -hmm. Um, yeah, we see that there are like different discussions uh, being held, especially around what types of CO2 we can use as a resource. Mm -hmm. um, in the European Union, we're pretty much uh, walking towards biogenic uh, CO2 um, or, or like those um, from waste incineration, for example, so unavoidable CO2 sources. Um, and that's exactly what we are focusing on. Mm -hmm. um, we built a geo model on where the production locations will be, uh, depending on what airport uh, needs the, the SAF resources. And from that, we see promising uh, production locations also in Europe, but for sure, um, there, there are many around the world, also in the uh, southern regions and the US for sure. The sort of overlay, uh, I guess, waste um, waste resources of CO two and with with the map of the airports in the world. Is that right? Uh, exactly. Yeah. So but, yeah. uh, there's a lot of data available actually on, mm -hmm. on CO two sources. There's for sure data on uh, renewable energy potential. Then transport uh, costs and logistics is something that goes into it, and also interest rates to actually build chemical plants mm. which is uh, a, a big differentiator from uh, production locations in Europe versus in Sub-Saharan Africa, for example. So this is what we take into consideration. Here. Yeah, I mean, the weighted average cost of capital clearly yeah, uh, have a big impact upon a very sort of front-loaded project, I assume. So um, excellent. So as I mentioned, you're, you're going to be speaking at, at SAF Congress. Um, I'm sure you're, you're, you're looking forward to to meeting lots of people uh and i'm sure there'll be a lot, a lot of people interested in potential um you know companies looking to get involved and, and partner with you guys uh and, and get a you know, deeper understanding to the technology that you, you're bringing to the market so we look forward to to, to watching your progress and, and helping you guys grow um so yeah well, well well done on getting as far as you've got and we look forward to seeing the development of sparky fuels so um, many thanks for, for, for taking the time to share some of your thoughts today and we look forward to seeing you in Amsterdam. Thank you. I'm really looking forward. Cheers. Take care.